Last session we worked on engagement training with Jax. We're using yes as the continuation marker, free as the terminal marker. We did luring, which he was struggling a little bit since he didn't have that much food drive, but you've been working on his food drive. And then we also introduced him to leash pressure. How's that training going? And do you know if he's fully conditioned to the markers yet? Uh, it's going well. Um, I would say he is conditioned to the markers. Uh, he understands what yes means and free uh, for the terminal. Uh, having a little issues with the uh, leash pressure uh, at some points, um, being a little stubborn. Okay, uh, no problem. So we'll do a training session. I think that's going to be a good start. We'll go over the markers again just to make sure we're doing it right. And do you remember the four most common change of behaviors that a dog has when they're conditioned to the marker? No. So remember. it's licking their lips, opening their mouth, salivating or moving their paws. A great way to test out to make sure your dog is conditioned. I just get the dog in front of me, I have the treats, I wait till the dog looks up at me, I say the marker, and then I don't reward the dog right away, and I watch to see if there's a change of behavior. And if the dog's conditioned, the most common is they open their mouth because in anticipation of that reward coming. We'll work with the luring a little bit, make sure he's following the food nicely. And then you said he's struggling a little bit with the leash pressure? Right, just a little bit. Okay, cool. And leash pressure is usually difficult for most dogs. So we'll do that. And then I know you said you're struggling with another issue that you wanted to address and you want to work on today. Right, that was, that was begging. I wanted to, whenever we're eating or he wants food, he, he starts to beg mm -hmm. and I'm, we're trying to get him out of that habit. Okay, perfect. And that's a real common problem that a lot of people run into. The nice thing is dogs aren't actually begging. It appears that they're begging, but what do we do when we want a dog to train? We get the treat pouch and we pull out food and we ask the dog to look at us in order to get the food. Right. The dog looks at us, we give the dog the food. So then when we sit down to eat our own meal, the dog acts out that behavior. The dog comes over and says, hey, last time you had food, I sat, I looked up at you, you gave me some of the food. So what's up? And then we tell the dog, stop begging. Well, that can be a little bit confusing. So what I like to do in this situation, instead of trying to stop the dog from begging because we actually want that behavior when we have food, when we're training, and it can be a little bit confusing for dogs. So instead of worrying about that, we're gonna direct them to a different behavior, which my favorite go-to is the climb command. If I sit down to eat, I have my dogs go to their climb platform, which is just an elevated bed. You guys have one, right? Yes. A nice elevated bed. That's the dog's place while we're eating. So you have to have a place command and then we have to have a good stay command and we'll work on that. So redirecting to the behavior you want is one of the best ways to work on any sort of behavioral issue. If our dogs know what they're supposed to do in a given situation, then it increases their confidence, it reduces the problems that we're having, and it gives our dog a very clear path to success. So I have a quick question. Um, I know he has his puppy teeth right now, but when his adult teeth come in, what's your best strategy to keep them white and healthy? That's a good question. What I like to do for my dogs is I give them raw bones probably about once every two weeks. So you can start doing that right now with the raw meat, dogs love it. Once he's at six months of age and his adult teeth come in though, and I started using it recently, my dogs love it, their breath is better and their teeth are whiter and it's called Bark Bright. Lucky for you, fixing dog breath is as easy as giving your dog their favorite treat with Bark Bright Dental Kits. Every good dog owner knows good health starts with excellent dental health. And with this simple change in your dog's oral hygiene routine, you can make a transformative impact, not just with bad breath, but by helping fight plaque and tartar too. My dogs love it, and I'm sure yours will too. Brightbox products are easy to use. They promote a healthy routine for your pup and provide tremendous benefits to you and your dog's life, including fresher breath in about one to two weeks with whiter teeth in three to four weeks. And now for you Ari and Charlie fans out there, we have a special deal for you. Earn a completely free extra bright kit valued at $30 when you sign up for a six month plan at brightbox.com backslash bright dental backslash Nate. You'll be glad you did. All right, so the very first step, engagement training. I know you said he's engaged, but we're just gonna do a couple as a refresher for him. Remember, we take the food, we hold it up by our face. Yes, and then we deliver the reward. I'm not gonna give him the reward while he's jumping up. So now th this is a common problem. 
puppies or dogs jumping up to get the food. The way I like to fix this is I'll slowly start to lower my hand and if the pup jumps up, I move it away. So I slowly start to lower and if he jumps up, I move away. And each time he's sitting, the food comes to him. Good boy, come on big guy. Very nice, good boy. He's not even paying attention. And if he stays sitting, then the food comes to him. So he learns jumping up makes the food go away, whereas sitting brings the food directly to him. And he's already figured it out. Good boy, very nice. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to the markers. Free! And then we move back. Good job, buddy, I can give him verbal praise. Remember, we like to switch hands. Yes. Very good. Free. Excellent work. Very nice. Good boy. So again, the main things we're doing is we want him to look up at us and we can even get down at his level. Yes. And I'm not going to reward when he jumps. Yes. Making sure that we say the word free before we move. So let's have you do a couple with him. Okay. Yes. Excellent, your timing's really nice. So now we're gonna do some learning. Do you have any other questions about engagement training? Uh, not at the moment. I think if something comes up, I'll, I'll ask. And one of the things that I like to do, so when I first start training a dog, we use what's known as continual reinforcement. We're rewarding every single correct repetition. And because of that, we go through a lot of treats. Now we're using his food, which is exactly the way that I like to do that. I know we went over that the first time, but just to repeat it. So I bring the dog out before starting any obedience session, I'll do maybe 30 seconds of engagement training. Okay. Because the more engaged I can have the dog, the faster they're going to learn. So now with step two, we're just gonna start luring him around, make sure he's following the food. What's nice about this step is you don't have to mark if you don't want to, although I do recommend using your marker. The reason why is when a dog does something we're trying to capture, we have to let the dog know within one second of them doing the behavior. Now, if we can't, you know, see what you mean by him being a little lazy. Come on, buddy. So if I lift up, his butt touches the ground, I can easily give him the food within a second of doing the behavior we're trying to capture. And since we're not giving any verbal commands, there's no stay. So I can just lure him around and just keep giving him food, no problem. Mm -hmm. But I do recommend practicing the markers just to work on your timing a little bit. Again, because watch how fast I can give him the food. The second his butt hits the ground, I'm able to give him the food. But again, we want to work on practicing saying the marker, yes, and releasing. Now remember, during this step, does it matter if you use your continuation marker yes or your terminal marker free? Does it matter? No. It does not. Why? Because either way, he's getting a reward and he's not in a stay. Right. So we don't really care about which marker we use until we start incorporating the command and we start reinforcing the stay. But right now, since I'm not saying down to get him to go into the position, there's no down stay. Therefore, it doesn't matter which marker we use. So since you're having the issue with begging, we're gonna use the climb command. So I wanna make sure we can get him to go on it. Come on, big guy. Come on, buddy. Very nice. Yes, and then reward. And it's also nice to lure him off. Yes, reward. Let's get the sit in there. Yes. And I'm marking once he does the behavior. So we're looking at the completion. Yes. And reward. And let's get a spin in there as well. Come on, big guy. Yes, that's just for fun. We want to make the training as fun and interesting as possible. Let's try to get him into heel position. And he's a little pup, so we're going to keep this nice and short. Yes. And reward. Excellent. So sit down spin whatever you want to do but the main thing is going to be the climb and having them come off the climb all right so what i'm going to do now that we are incorporating the command come on buddy i'm going to make sure i say the command then i'm going to guide him onto the little climb bed and it doesn't matter where you are some people feel like they need to be right next to the climb when they start teaching it you could be anywhere so i could be right here and i can say climb and now i'm going to guide him yes now he's on a climb stay. And now I'm watching him. The moment he breaks, I'll say one wrong and I'll place him back on. Yes, 
If he holds it nicely, I'm gonna use the continuation marker and I'm gonna reinforce that behavior. I'm gonna drop the leash, yes. Go back and reward. Add a little bit more distance. Yes, since he's staying on the position. Add more distance. Yes, very good, he's gonna make this easy. And I'm just gonna start walking around the room. Yes, wrong. A wrong can override a yes. We casually bring him back. Very good, good boy, no reward. Wrong. Good. If he holds it for about five seconds, then I can mark for duration. So now he's been holding it for at least five seconds. Yes, and now I can reward. And that was long enough of a time span away from him breaking the position that we are not rewarding him for placing him back, but we were rewarding him for maintaining the position. Yes, good boy. Very nice. Build more distance. Now dogs will often break when we squat down because we usually use that as a technique to call them to us. So this is a good way to work on that as well. So I'll squat down, wrong. If he breaks, I just say the one wrong and I bring him back. Good boy, very nice. Wrong. Very good, buddy. Wrong. And you have to be ready to continue to do it. Sometimes mm. you may feel like a broken record. Yes. Very good, nice job. I'm gonna grab a couple more pieces. Also, when you first start teaching a stay command, a good rule to follow is if you can't touch your pup, don't free him up for about two weeks at least. The reason why is dogs are creatures of habit. If you start teaching a stay and then walking 10 feet away and calling him to you or releasing him, after enough of those, when you get about 10 feet away, what do you think he's gonna do? He's gonna automatically he's, run to you. Exactly, he's going to release himself. So if we start the foundation of any time we release him, we're close enough to touch him, then he's going to think that you have to be next to him in order for him to be released. And it just really helps solidify the stay command. So I'm going to release him, he's doing a great job, and I'm going to use a terminal marker. You could release him by saying a release word, such as break, which just, which, such as break, which just means release. It doesn't guarantee a reward as the terminal marker does. Free. Come on, buddy. Good boy. Very nice. And now we're going to have you do it. Okay. Climb. Much better. Good. Turn off yes. the pressure. And something that I do that helps the dog a little bit when we're guiding them. Let me show you real quick. Yeah. Whoops. When I start to guide them, I'll keep my hand at their level. Okay. So this makes it a little bit easier for him to fall. Good boy. Instead of holding it high up. So if you hold it on an angle and you're pulling, that could slightly confuse them sometimes mm -hmm. and make them think that we want them to sit. Yes. And now technically he's actually not on a climb stay because I cued him off and I cued him back on without saying climb. Oh, okay. And if that happens, if you're not sure whether or not your dog's in a stay, then all I do for that is I just let him know that he's now in that position without saying stay because I like the implied stay. So I just go climb, good boy. And now it's a climb stay. Even though he doesn't fully understand it yet, the more we incorporate that into the training, the more he'll start to understand it. Right. Yes. Good boy, buddy. And then if you want to try to squat down, perfect. Yes. Good job, Jax, good job. Try coming over here. Yes. Good job, buddy. There you go. Excellent. He's doing really nice. Yes. Good job, Jax. Yes. Good job, buddy. 
Now what's great about dogs is they're very situational. So if you have a certain routine, you've probably already seen it. Like if the first thing you do in the morning is you take him out to go to the bathroom, he's expecting that when you first wake up. If you feed him first thing in the morning, he's expecting to be fed first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. They're very good at recognizing patterns and situations. So what you can do with mealtime, you said when people start either prepping the table or once they sit down, he's running over, he's saying, you guys got food, I sit, you give me food, what's up? And he doesn't understand that that's not his place to be in that position. So what you can do is you can sit down right after you sit down, that's your cue. Or once you start prepping the table, whatever it is, as long as you have some sort of physical cue that represents him going to the climb. And you just create a pattern. So start prepping the table, place him on the climb. Or sit down, place him on the climb. What will end up happening is he'll start to recognize that. And when you start prepping the table, he will go to his climb bed on his own. That will basically become a nonverbal command. Just like the automatic sit when halted. How do we teach that? We slow down, we stop, and then we make the dog sit. We can tell him to sit. We can use the leash to cue him to sit. We can use a food lure. It doesn't matter. But if every single time we stop, and we tell our dog to sit after enough of those, when we stop, our dog will automatically sit. So this is the exact same concept. So you can use a command too. So for example, you're prepping the table, you place your food down. Once you place your food down, I would go climb, and then I'd walk over, grab them, and I'd guide them over on the climb. Very good, nice job, buddy. And then I would go and sit down. Now, of course, once you first start doing this, he's going to know it's a little bit different than a training session mm -hmm. and he's going to break more. So you can either set it up as a training session, get a plate of food, set it down and expect that it might get cold mm -hmm. and then go through this because he's going to break more once you sit down. Wrong. You just have to make sure you follow through. Usually a couple sessions of that and every time you sit down, he'll maintain that position. And now instead of worrying about wrong, worrying about him begging or practicing a behavior you don't want him to continue as he gets older, he now knows when you sit down, that's his place to be. Wrong. And I like to do this with everything. I mean, I use the climb for so many different uh, situations. For example, if I'm sitting down and I'm responding to emails, come on, buddy. Good boy. Very nice. I have my dogs on a climb. When I'm in the backyard, let's say I'm in the backyard reading or something like that, the Dogs are on a climb stick. What other questions do you have? Is there anything else that you wanted to go over today? No, that, that was good for Yeah, I, I mean, it's, where a, he's it's at. enough for him. For, right, <laughs> for where he's at. So big thing is keep, make sure you do about 30 seconds of that engagement training before each session. You feed them twice a day? Three times. Three times a day, that's three training sessions each day. If you don't have time, if you're busy, you're getting ready to run out the door, I would still use that as an opportunity but what i might do i'm just going to do one handful yeah let's say i have his entire bowl of food right here i might ask for one be behavior and give him an entire handful and i can get through a session in one to two minutes but he's still working for every bite which greatly increases that food drive which makes the training significantly easier because as we already know reward-based training is limited by how much the dog wants the reward so if we can increase the value of the reward the training becomes that much easier because a dog that wants what we have is willing to do the behaviors we're asking them to perform and then the luring is looking really nice so i keep working on that and i'd really focus more on that leash pressure mm -hmm. get it to the point where he knows resisting doesn't work and if he does start to resist, make sure that doesn't work for him. Stay strong. Once he complies, release that pressure. Go boy, nice job. And always end on a good note, short sessions, and you should be good. Sounds good. All right, Thank awesome. you so much. All right, no other questions? No, I think we're good. Sounds we good should. then. Thanks good seeing you again. Nice to see you. <laughs>